This is a short story about our dearly loved Penny Baker, born December 21, 1922, as Henrietta Teich. Of course, we never knew her as Henrietta. She disliked that name for herself, so she changed it to Penny. Here she is with her Teich family. You can see her sister Louisa, her mom Millie, and her dad Bill. What can be said about Penny that would be a fair tribute? There are so many things I could say, but it would take more than a 10 minute video to do so. Like a diamond, Penny has many facets. My dad always told me how much he loved Penny's cute little ways. He thought her smile was what was so attractive. In fact, he wrote a song about her smile. I remember Penny always got chills when she heard it. Penny's children thought she was a very loving mother, ready to give the shirt off her back to help them in times of trouble. She enthusiastically shared stories with her friends about their lifestyle, even when their choices didn't quite match what she would have chosen for them. She always relayed those stories like a proud mama. Her grandchildren called her Granny, or Granny Penny. They thought she was so fun to be with. She was full of life and ready to go anywhere. She was a real inspiration to them giving homage to the aging process by maintaining a youthful spirit. Even into her 80s, she was a go-getter. She'd take trips to visit them in Hawaii organize Scrabble cruises, go on long road trips, and sign up for as many fun things as she could. She knew everyone's birthday by heart, and she made it her mission to see that every person on her birthday list got a card, a call, or a gift. As everyone who knew Penny knows, she loved to play Scrabble. She started a Scrabble Club in Riverside and also the Scrabble Club here at Laguna Woods. My daughter Nike and I lived with my dad and Penny in Riverside for six months. It was during that time Penny taught Nike to play Scrabble. Nike got so good from Penny's tutelage, Penny signed her up for a national Scrabble tournament. Then she made the national news and now is in the Scrabble record books. Another proud moment for Penny. One of the fondest Scrabble memories I had was the time we attended the Halloween Scrabble Tournament at the Grand Canyon. I still laugh every time I look at those pictures of Penny in her handmade cave woman costume. Yes, laughter was certainly part of her everyday experience. You are never devoid of fun when in her presence. Here's a little montage of photos showing Penny having fun with friends and family. A few years ago, Scott Taylor, a producer from Malibu, California, became acquainted with Penny and wanted to include her in his documentary about the forgotten stories of World War II. He has spent many hours with her over the last few years trying to document as much as he could about her experience as a whack during the war. Her stories captured his heart. He plans to use them in his upcoming documentary. Once she was in the middle of delivering classified documents when her Jeep was hit by a landmine. That certainly caught his attention. He now has been trying to help us get her her purple heart she deserves. Let's hear what Scott has Hello. to say. Hello, my name is Scott Taylor and I'm doing a documentary called Americans Who Gay Law. And I uh, met Penny M. Baker through her granddaughter, Felisa, and uh, all the people that I meet are through word of mouth. I want it to be God's path. And these are stories never told, uh, boots on the ground stories. Well, it turns out Penny was a uh, one of a squad of, of drivers that they, they train these women to drive the generals around. And uh, so sh they got trained and went to Europe, and by the time she got to Europe, her husband had been killed, and so the army gave her a week off to go find her husband's grave, and uh, so she, she had a week to go find him, and then she had to get back to the war. And uh, 
So the generals that she she drove around all the generals, and in, uh, including General Eisenhower, and uh, so she was Secret Service, and she had a uniform with no rank on it. It was just a private's uniform, but it was Secret Service, and uh, there, she was trusted so much that um, they gave her a top secret briefcase to take from the American command post to the Russian command post. And she was driving along, and she's being driven with four people in the car, and uh, behind Russian lines she hit a, a landmine, and uh, the driver was killed, both the MPs were severely injured, and uh, she was out for five days in a coma, apparently. and. Uh, so when she woke up, they're going, where's the briefcase? And she goes, I don't know, I got blown up. Well, uh, because she lost that briefcase, they had to change the course of the war overnight. They had to move divisions and, and disguise what their plans were going to be. It was, everything was in that briefcase of all of our Allied movements. And, and uh, so because Penny got blown up, they had to change the course of the war. And... Uh, she never got a Purple Heart for that, because she was Secret Service and it was a secret mission, so it never happened. Well, I've been trying to petition to get her a Purple Heart for years now, and, uh, and I guess I'm too late because Penny had died, and um, I'm really heartbroken. I've seen her at least six times, a couple times in the nursing home. And the last time I went to see her, uh, she couldn't talk. and. Uh, she kissed the back of my hand and uh, gave me that big smile. So this day is for Penny, who she was and what she did for our country. And it's an honor for me to know this American who gave all. Great. This is the kind of car she drove for Ike. Oh, fact, really? There's a picture of Ike leaning against that car, 42 Packard. That's her car, huh? That's what she used to drive, it, type of car she used to drive them around in. Wow. Isn't that How cool? I don't have a magazine like that? I got that when you were in the hospital, Mom. It was a fluke. Yeah, it is a fluke. <laughs> Finding this like this, see? And I asked if I could keep it, and they said, sure. See, there's the car you drove right yeah, there, huh? Yeah, it was a big car at the time. Yeah, and there's Ike right there. He Talking to my, General Marshall. He was my friend. It was nice to know that the big brass mingles with the <laughs> little, <laughs> well, the I little heard, privates. Hey, I heard you were the big brass. But when <laughs> no, you guys showed up, you. you were with Ike, and they're just rolling out the red carpet. Said, <laughs> come on, Penny, let's go this way. Here you go. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can come to Ike. <laughs> <laughs> we went to their secret house. <laughs> They had a secret place. Yeah? Well, they treated you like a queen, that's what I heard. Uh, yeah, that, at that point. <laughs> now Penny will tell us about her stories of being in the Army. It's now October 2004, and you wanted to know a little bit more about my previous life in the Army now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, where do we begin, Nancy? Question me. Question you? Um, well, originally when you went over there, it was to find out more about the fact that you had lost your husband. So that kind of set the climate. Okay. The whole reason you went there to begin with. All right. Um, everything you went through in the meantime, all the hardships you went through, mm -hmm. um, certainly had a good deal to do with your relationships once you were over there. Um, the people you met, um, how did it feel? Just like it could be a temporary? It's a live today and live it up and have fun. Do what you're supposed to do and do what you want to do. So I realized that after I had lost my husband, he had gone over with the first batch into Africa, into Tunisia, over into uh, Sicily, and on up in through 
France and Italy and into all the fighting. And he wound up wounded, got malaria, was in a hospital in England, back again to France and Italy, and eventually he was with a res when he had gotten back, he was with a rest and recuperation group, R and R, and he was with the uh, two officers that wanted to go for a, a little jaunt, little ride to captains, and the three of them went in a jeep, and the three of them were killed by snipers. In somewhere in in Belgium, but he was buried in France. Uh, let me tell you a story that I think I left out on my tape a year ago about Jesse and I taking a furlough. We had a seven-day pass, seven-day furlough to go to the, uh, excuse me, the French Riviera. No, Jesse was your funny friend. My buddy friend, friend yes. Jesse Mer Merman, and I was Penny Mercer. <laughs> Merman and Mercer, the, the like team. Yeah, no, we were the comedian team. <laughs> At any rate, uh, we flew to Paris first, because I did have some business to take care of there for the Army. And uh, what had occurred... The weather was bad, and we couldn't get a flight from there to the, uh, uh, the French Riviera. And um, we were stuck in Paris. For, what a place to be stuck. It was <laughs> so horrible. We were there, instead of for two days, we were there for almost two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was very difficult to get I out of Paris. We we tried so hard, but we couldn't get away from a few of the parties. <laughs> and um, well, we finally wound up getting down to the French Riviera, and we went to the Marseille to visit Ida first. And we spent a night with her, with a little experiences and fun there. And um, then we took a train. But before the train ride, we had two Frenchmen on mules to take us to the train. <laughs> and that was something to behold. <laughs> At Penny's 90th birthday party, I asked her family and friends to share some Penny stories they will always remember. Let's take a peek at what folks had to say. Hi, I'm Gary. I met uh, Penny uh, way back in the early 90s, and I moved to California in 95. And shortly after I came here, Penny was running a tournament in Palm Springs, and uh, I helped her run that tournament. And uh, one of the things that I got from, t that I learned from Penny, is she taught me how to spell. And today I'm known as the phony king of the Scrabble world. Because she taught you how to because spell. Because she taught me how to spell <laughs> phonies. <laughs> Great story. Well, I've known Penny for many, many years, probably close to 30. And uh, one of my best memories is uh, spending a week with her in Reno. We were roommates at a tournament. And uh, what I what I really remember about her is her uh, her ability to uh, make up her creative ability to, to make up words. <laughs> yeah. and words that aren't good, right? That aren't good. Yeah, you gotta gotta watch her. <laughs> hey, Paul, tell me how you know Penny and what your favorite thing about Penny is. Well, her. Um, incredible friendliness when I went to a tournament uh, just to drop by because it was written up in the newspaper and uh, she was so welcoming and so I joined the club in Huntington Beach and and I just really dig her for being the Mae West of Scrabble world. 
<laughs> Good. Mae West of the Scrabble World. I love Definitely. that. Definitely. <laughs> Thank you. So tell me your, your, your thing you wanted to tell me about Penny, Miss Bell. I love Penny. I think she's a unique, wonderful woman. Wild and fun. And I think that's what keeps her, keeps her young. But the funniest thing that ever happened that I saw Penny do was when we came to Laguna to take her out one day. It was very warm. And we were walking out the door. And she said, it is so hot. I'll show you how hot it is. So she pulls up her sweater to show me her bare bosoms. So I wore a bra so I could be cooler. I said, Penny, I don't think you wear a bra anyways. You're great. That's my funny story. <laughs> <laughs> how about you, Howard? I don't have funny stories, but Penny's my sweetheart. Truly, she's like a second mom to me. And I make it a point to talk to her at least a few times a week. Just if it's nothing more than calling to say hello, I'm thinking about you. And uh, she's very important to me and my Tell wife. me all about your favorite experience with Penny. Well, there's a lot of them, but one stands out in my mind. Uh, when Penny and I went shopping, I think it was at Costco, and when we came out, we couldn't find the car in the big parking lot. And Penny said, oh, don't worry, I have my cell phone with me. Oh. And then we both got hysterical, you know, she's going to call up a car or what. But we both realized how silly that was in the lab, but it was, it was a very funny moment, so we enjoyed it. Oh, that's good. Cheryl was telling me to think of a story to talk about, and I was trying to think of which one. I kept remembering the time you took me to, uh, to work. And you worked for the Nestle factory. You went to the, uh, the stores to collect all the candy. And I just remember, Granny would always give me the candy, <laughs> it was so <laughs> special. Granny, I also want to thank you for the beautiful smile, which is due to you. You know, if, if it wasn't for you, I would be missing these teeth. And I get complimented on my good looks all the time. Well, Thank you for the game. I think my favorite memory is uh, trying on her shoes and getting her shoes every time I went to her house because we would fit the same size. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. I'd get a collection of Granny Penny shoes every time I showed up. Oh, that's a great memory. And, okay, uh, go. Always had a good time with her. She always was there to take me into her home and we stay at her place. Well, that's what I love about Penny. Me too. I'll, I'll talk. Okay. It, uh, I, I haven't hung out with her that much, but she's a real nice and wonderful person. Are you good doing this? Yeah, good. that's a good thing. Yeah. How about you? Love you, Penny. My favorite Penny me memory? Oh, there's so many avenues. I guess the funniest thing was her house in Riverside. Was her sign on the door that said, uh, before you come in, something, remove your clothes instead of your shoes. The thing thing that impressed me about Penny as a neighbor was that she loved another neighbor's dog. Uh, she had a little dog, I think her name was Sadie, and Penny loved that dog. She and Sam would take the dog in the car with them down to the beach and <laughs> take the dog on an outing that she often uh, dog sat with Sadie. And I just thought that was beyond the pale of what any neighbor I'd ever had before would do for another neighbor. So that's why I was really impressed with Penny. Oh, that's great. It was hard to see Penny decline. After years of such independence and vitality, seeing her so dependent and frail was difficult for all who loved her. Yet despite her illness, she always had an amazing smile on her face. All her care providers commented about how pleasant she was. They thought it was utter joy caring for her. There are so many cute bedside stories during her last days with us. She put a smile on all our faces. Like my dad, I see that Penny's smile was an enigma. For me, it will become a lasting memory.